Please be seated. Good morning. Let us pray. Gracious and all wise God, we thank you for this day uh, that you have allowed us to enter your sanctuary. We thank you, Lord, for carrying us throughout this week, comforting us when we needed comfort, strengthening us. When we needed strength, and now, Lord, we have gathered in your sanctuary to hear a word from you. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our spirits to receive what you would have to say to us on today. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. It's in your son Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you are glad to be in his presence on today? Amen. Um, it's PCS season. Is anybody headed out? Raise your hands. Okay, a lot of y'all. Praise the Lord. Y'all tired like I am? Amen. I hate moving. I hate moving, but nonetheless, it has to be done. Um, Fox says I have about 36 minutes, but I, um, I'm i owed a lot of time uh, for the little bit of time that I, I preached up here, so uh, I won't be too long, uh, but I'm not going to Rush I want to call your attention to Psalm 73. And uh, I'm going to read Psalm 73 until I stop. Amen. I'm going to read it until I stop. And uh, I have two versions of the text up here with me today. But uh, I'm going to start in the uh, New King James Version, but I'll also be in the uh, New Living Translation. Psalm 73, verse 1, uh, a Psalm of Asaph, says, Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart, but as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pains in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than heart could wish. They scoff or scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore, his people return here and waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? Y'all hold on to that verse. And there is knowledge, and is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said, I would speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought
taught how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I stood there. Then I understood there in. Let's stop there and I'll pick up. Verse 16, when I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. As I reflect upon this psalm and I pay attention to the first verse of this psalm. The psalmist says, truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. The psalmist begins with a statement of faith. And can anybody in here testify with the psalmist that God truly is good. Amen. Amen. Y'all don't say it like you mean it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Testify with the psalmist. Amen. That God truly is good. Amen. But with this statement of faith follows um, words that don't match that faith because he says but as for me my feet had almost stumbled my steps had nearly slipped there were some things that happened in life there were some people that I encountered in life uh, that caused me to not be as strong in my faith prior to meeting these people, prior to having these experiences. And therefore, while I understand that God truly is good, there's something about this walk where I almost stumbled, my foot almost slipped because of what I saw, what I experienced, who I have come into relationship with. Then he says, For I was envious of the boastful. I was envious of the boastful. Here, uh, the psalmist runs into a uh, dilemma. A dilemma. Because he understands that God is good. But the things in which he has encountered are causing him to stumble and slip um, but then he recognizes in his own self that uh, he had grown envious of the people around him because things were happening for them uh, more so than they were happening for him. And all of us uh, have been in a situation or we are in a situation or we will come to a situation where we will begin to envy those around us because it seems like, it appears like God is doing something for them and leaving us out of the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, can I say um, in my second to last Sunday here that uh, I felt that way here at RF Milton Hall. I felt that God was doing things for other people and I looked at all that I was giving and I did not see, it did not appear, it did not seem that God was giving me anything in return. I knew that God truly was good, but because of what I saw, what I felt, you know, the things you begin to internalize that you don't hear out loud, you just in your own head, my foot began to stumble and slip. Uh, and a part of me began to be envious uh, of the boastful when I saw 
the prosperity. A lot of times um, we get jealous of our neighbor whose grass looks green on the other side of our fence, not realizing if uh, we get invited over for uh, a hamburger and some lemonade that we'll see that big hole that we didn't see because the fence blocked it uh, from our side of the house. That's right. Uh, don't ever get envious or jealous of what somebody else has because you don't know what they had to go through to get what they had. Uh, in addition, you may not want what they had All right. because uh, you may not be willing to pay the price of what they have. Verse 4 says, um, they seem to live such painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They're not plagued with problems like everyone else. Uh, seems like you only want to get sick. Everybody else is well. And you don't understand why the doctor gave you bad news and why God is not manifesting his healing. After all, he is Jehovah, Rafa, God, our healer. Uh, but the sickness seems to be hanging around a little bit longer than I would like it to. Those who came to see about me seem to have faded away uh, and no longer really given the concern that they were giving at first. And now I feel like I'm out here all by myself with this condition while everybody else is living their best lives healthy uh, without anything to worry about. The psalmist says, I'm envious. He says they wear pride like a jeweled necklace and clothe themselves with cruelty. No one seems to be nice to the other person. Uh, it seems like to be nice to somebody is a chore. I don't do it out of kindness and the love of my heart. New Living Translation says in verse 7, these fat cats have everything their hearts could ever wish for. They scope and speak only evil in their pride. They seek to crush others. Uh, some people's motive and intent is uh, to, to do harm to you to get ahead. And they don't care what it takes. They'll take everything away from you just so they can gain what they're trying to achieve. Uh, there are some cruel people in this world. And the psalmist is very mindful of that. He says, they boast against the very heavens. And their words stout throughout the earth. And verse 10, so the people are dismayed and confused drinking in all their words. But verse 11, you know, you ought to be ashamed if you ask this question. What does God know, they ask. What does God know? I find it strange that they would have the gall, the mitigated gall to ask this question. Because I, a seminary student who went to uh, uh, theology school, or seminary rather, to matriculate under uh, earning a master of divinity. I have yet to master the divinity. God, who knows the number of hairs on your head, who has given you breath to breathe, uh, who has put food on your table, clothes on your back, uh, gives you health and strength. Uh, the wicked wants to know what, is he what does God know? Who looked at nothing and spoke into nothing and nothing became something. Mm. Uh, what does God know? Who flung the stars in space who uh, measured the water with his garments and created the seas and separated the sea from the land 
Uh, what does God know? God who is omniscient right. knows everything. everything. You might be sitting there today wondering about your situation, uh, pondering if God even knows what you're going through. My brothers and sisters, the Lord knows everything that you are going through. He knows everything that you have gone through, and he knows, this is a surprise now, everything that you will go through. Yeah. All we have to do is show up. Mm. Verse 12 says, look at these wicked people enjoying a life of ease with their riches multiplied. Did I keep my heart Pure for nothing, the psalmist wants to know. Uh, when I read this, I thought about the Clark sisters who uh, wrote a song that said, Is my living in vain. in vain? No, your living is not in vain. You may not see the rewards of everything that you uh, are doing right now, but hold on. Just a little while longer. Payday will come after a while. Amen. Amen. Does it pay to be holy if I don't see the return? Yes. Because God charges us to be holy. He requires us to be holy. Without holiness, the Bible says, no man shall see God. That I keep myself innocent for no reason. I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. If I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. Uh, let me say here um, that it's okay to go through stuff. And it's okay to feel what you feel. You are entitled to your feelings. But uh, don't let your feelings cause somebody else to stumble. All right. You know, uh, it's one thing to talk to one or two people, get their opinion about the situation. But after a while, that turns into something else. And you can begin to uh, take them away from the things of God because now they've uh, adapted your negative mentality because that's what it turned to. It's not your feelings anymore. It's animosity, negativity, and envy. And all that negative stuff that's from Satan. So uh, be mindful of that because we don't want to cause our brother or sister to stumble uh, when we are experiencing the things that we are going through. Uh, verse 16 So I tried, the psalmist says, to understand why the wicked prosper. What a difficult task it is. What a difficult task it is. Trying to worry about what somebody else is doing. Mm. When you hadn't even figured out your own. <laughs> that four letter word. <laughs> Y'all ain't say You worry about somebody else's four letter word and you ain't even figured out your own. Worry about your own. Worry about yourself. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And don't worry about others. Because trying to figure out other people's things will take all your energy, take all your time, and you would lose so much time with God, with what God has for you, you'll miss it. And the things that you should be doing, you won't do because you are focused on somebody else. But then verse 17 says, Then I went into your sanctuary, O God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. Years ago, um, way before I joined the military, and I was dealing with um, some things in life, work, personal, family, etc., etc. Uh, working part-time jobs here and there and uh, being in my low points in life, 
Um, I always went to the church. I would come into the sanctuary. I would lay on the back pew and I would sleep in the sanctuary. I would even come to the altar and lay on the floor during the week. Nobody in there. There's me and the Lord being in his presence. I would leave and go back to the things that I had to go back to. And some of those things did not change immediately. But the presence in which I walked back into those situations changed. Because I was comforted in knowing that the spirit of God was with me. Amen. The psalmist in verses 15 through 20 undergoes a change of perspective when he walked into the sanctuary. The psalmist told us in another song, another writer perhaps, that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. When you walk into the sanctuary, you are confronted by the presence of God. And anything that is worrying you when you walk in here, you forget about it or you should forget about it because his presence should be that thick in here but also in your eye gate. Amen. Because those things that you're worried about, the Lord will deal with them. All right. Verse 18. Truly, you put them on a slippery path and send them sliding over the cliff to destruction. In an instant, they are destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. When you arise, O Lord, you will laugh at their silly ideas as a person laughs at dreams in the morning. Then I realized self-realization that my heart was bitter and I was all torn up inside. I was so foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. Yet. Can I hear you say yet? Yet. I still belong to you. You hold my right hand. Anybody been in love? Anybody in love? Can y'all talk back to me? Amen. Have you ever been loved enough with somebody to put up with your mess? Amen. Amen. And still love you? Amen. Amen. I got a hand all over you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, if you were with your significant other this morning, why don't you look over at them and say thank you. Thank you. Y'all didn't do what I need y'all to say it like that. Come on, look at your significant other and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Putting up with me. Amen. Because not everybody will do that. People you work with may not put up with you. Some of the, you know, people that you live with may not put up with you. Your family members may not put up with you. But in spite of you, All right. God says, I will never leave you. Nor forsake you. Nor forsake you. Why? Because you belong to me. And no matter how far you might have fallen or how envious you may have become, I'm still going to hold your hand. Amen. I'm still going to guide you with my counsel and lead you to a glorious destiny because what I have for you is greater than what you are going through. Mm. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail. My spirit may grow weak. 
But you, God, remain the strength of my heart. You are mine forever. God's holiness impressed on the psalmist even in the midst of his infliction, affliction. Realized that he was always with God and would be received in glory. Not only that, he was able to reconcile his adversity, everything he lost, because when you compare your adversity with God, the value of those things evaporate. The Reverend James Cleveland said, uh, and one preacher said he stole this from Gladys Knight. I've had my share of life's ups and downs. God's been good to me, and the downs have been few. I guess you might say the Lord has blessed me because there's never been a time in my life when he didn't see me through. If anyone should ever write my life story, for whatever reason, there might be. He be there between each line of praise and glory, pain and glory, because Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. In spite of you, in spite of what you might be going through or see happening for others that's not happening for you. The psalmist started off by saying, truly, God is good. And he ended it the same way. Because those things that I'm concerned about, at the end of it all, are not really that important. Because Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Amen. Gracious and eternal God, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. We just ask God that you will keep our focus on you in spite of the things that we may see, in spite of the things that we may go through. Our help comes from you. Lord, we thank you for this day. And we just bask in your presence the remainder of this day and throughout this week until we are back in your sanctuary to do this again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.